I'm going to tie a Kinney stone and I'm starting off with a size 12 jig hook in the vise. I've got a 332nd tungsten bead already on as well as maybe 8 to 10 wraps of my lead wire. I'm going to tie this in a golden stone so I've got an 8-aught light Cahill thread that I'll just get started on the back, wrap up through, and then trim that tag. Bring my thread all the way down to the bend in the hook where I'll attach my my tail. And I'm going to use both for the tail and the legs these barred silly legs and this is in a yellow uh, and black and normally when I'm doing tails I tell you to bend the material over the thread uh, and then situate it that way which you certainly can but in this case I'm going to bend it in half and tie them in by that tag. And the reason I do that is because in this pattern, and anytime you tie on a jig, it's going to ride the opposite of the way you traditionally tie it. So the tail, it's important that it lines up with that hook shank so that when it rides upside down, it's not flaring up or flaring down. Then I'll just come back through and split them. and just make sure they're good and wrapped down. Then I'll fold them over and trim them so I can be sure they're about a hook shank in length. The pattern has an underbody to it. I'm going to use a uh, pearl tinsel. So I'll trim a section off and tie it into the side. And the overbody for this is going to be a uh, micro lace or a tubing. And again, it's in yellow. You can also use B rib if you like. I'll take my yellow lace. And tie it in. And then stretch it. So that again, it has that lower profile. And I'll just take a moment here to smooth out some of the under underbody or thread wraps. And now I can bring my pearl tinsel through. And by putting this pearl tinsel on underneath, when you wrap that tubing over, it'll give it a nice translucent look. A couple wraps there, and I'll trim that. And keep that tag end that you trimmed off. You'll be using that for your flashback later on. So now I can wind my tubing up through, and hopefully it's showing up on on camera how that pearl tinsel shines through from underneath and then I'll tr tie that off when I get to my my thread and trim it and now I'll tie some of these materials in with my vise rotated and the first is going to be that pearl tinsel so I want this to be the flashback I'll hold it to the side and allow the thread to wrap it up to the to the middle of the of the body there and then just tie that in so I'll put on some dubbing and I like to use one of two materials. I like this golden stone uh, dubbing or I also like to use a, a light olive uh, in a quick descent dubbing. So I, I tie them in, in both. For this I'll use the golden stone dubbing 
and I'll put on a kind of a collar here on the back to start and then I'll tie in my legs and then I'll finish out the the rest of the dubbing as I go so the first collar and then I'll come back to my silly legs and in this case then I'll bend it over the thread and situate it trim it do the same thing for the other side fold it over position it and get a rough a rough trim. Now if the legs at this point are going in, going in a couple of different directions don't worry when you start to dub it you have a chance to correct those those legs so I'll start by dubbing here in between the legs And I'll apply some more dubbing and finish off in front. Hold the legs back. And you can see how those legs start to cooperate then when they're in place. So now I'll rotate one more time and I'll come back to my flash bring it straight over kind of navigate around the legs here tie that in and then trim and I'll put on one more super fine dubbing noodle as a collar and then whip finish and trim and now you can do some of the some of the finishing touches here adjusting the the legs so that they sit just the way you want them and also trim them have much guidance on how long or short to cut your legs I probably keep mine a little bit shorter than than what I should but whatever whatever suits your your eye and that is the Kinney Stone